Charge me extra. <laughs> Charge you extra. You did get quieter there again. I don't know what happened, but well, but welcome to teachers teaching teachers. It's January eleventh, twenty twelve, and we have uh, a few folks joining us uh, to talk about. A book that we've been talking about for a month or so now, um, Walk Out, Walk On by um, Margaret Wheatley and Deborah Fries. Next week, Deborah Fries will be joining us. And so one of the things we should talk about is what we'd like to talk to her about. <laughs> but um, we want to just open this up and talk about the book, talk about what's going on with people. And um, who wants to start? Say hello. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Hello. Hi. That's Chris Sloan up there. Chris, what's going on with you? Uh, in regards to this book or just in general? In general. Let's start that way. Well, uh, it's finals week at my school. And, and uh, in uh, you know, it, it's actually happy times. Uh, because like today for a photography final one of the uh, students said you know we should have a lot of food for the final and so we had a bake-off we ate a lot of sugar today and, and then we did presentations <laughs> of famous photographers too but it was you know it was good times and uh, and then you know I teach straight English as well and that you know they had to do a little essay writing but still you know I think it was good times in a different kind of way People liked it, though. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a pretty pleasant time. Cool. We were talking a little bit before that we've had it both ways. You know, we just switched to trying to cram it all in before. And you're right. It uh, depends. There's, that's the plus to afterwards because it is more relaxed. And you come back finishing something up rather than coming back trying to start something new, you know, so... Yeah, there are those people who say, uh, you know, you should wrap everything up before Christmas because they'll forget everything over Christmas break, you know. But then it's like, well, if that's the theory, <laughs> then, you know, what's the point of doing it before <laughs> or after if they're going to forget things over the break? So I think they remember the important stuff. Is what I think. It's like we know so much. How come we're, we continue on, you know? We, we know too much to be continuing with this. So that's good. What about you, Paul? What have you been up to? Uh, what have I been up to? Uh, I don't know. I I had a lot of fun today with kids. Uh, one one young man in particular, his name is um, Justin, um, spent the entire day in my room. Um, another another student uh, showed him. Oh, what's I'm going to get it wrong. Audio is something that hooks up with Google Chrome. Um, it's a really easy audio producer, and he created uh, some beats and some songs. And by the by lunchtime, he was teaching four or five other people <laughs> who came in and wanted to do it too. This is a kid who normally bops around the hall and barely goes to class. So obviously, you know he found a way to connect to something he likes to do. Um, and, you know, his other teachers, frankly, were happy he wasn't in class. Uh, <laughs> so that that was fun. Um, and, you know, we have state tests coming up, and everyone kind of gets all excited about preparing kids for the test. My preparation for the test is to have them all start a new novel so that they'll have something fresh when they go into the test with. So that's been fun to help them find something to read. So that's what I've been up to. Uh, Fred, how are you? Welcome. I'm doing great. I, I love that idea of assigning a novel as test prep. That, that's <laughs> yeah, and it um, is, you know. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, I, I'm uh, excited to be getting back to work, but I've really been on in vacation mode and, and family mode for um, several weeks, so it, I'm uh, easing back in and then really uh, going 
gangbusters starting on Saturday with a digital storytelling workshop and then another workshop uh, next week that's the, the, the second in a series that's going to go on all through the spring with a uh, middle school um, entire staff. So I'm really excited about that project. And then I'm going to be going on Friday to uh, Renaissance High, the continuation high school where I've done most of my maker work and we're going to actually start production on a film out of that maker work. Um, so that's exciting and, and uh, my easing back into work today was um, planning a series of four uh, digital literacy as the path to the Common Core Standards workshops. That'll be uh, Saturday morning workshops for teachers and, and the community mm -hmm. um, over the next four months. So Who from the community will be coming, do you think? Well, I, it depends on uh, who we can get, but I, I have one, uh, one friend who comes to many of my workshops who started, I, I first met her through an online bulletin board um, back in the, in the early 80s, and um, she then began to volunteer in my classroom as a substitute parent for some kids who were kind of in trouble. And, and she continues to work in the community as a as an activist. She was very last time I saw her, she came to our um, uh, writing project um, uh, Saturday all day workshops and talked about having just secured a grange out in the farming area outside of Watsonville that they're hoping to turn into a community center and have classes and workshops there. So. Um, there's, there are a lot of activist people. And one of the most exciting things that happened to me actually was uh, seeing Frank Bardicke discuss his book about the farm workers and um, the, the, uh, the, the distortion of the history of the farm workers that when it is focused just on Cesar Chavez and ignores what the workers themselves brought from their own experience in in uh, in Mexico their their expertise as workers he has a just a fascinating story it made me think of Mike Rose and and uh, uh, his work on on uh, you know the mind at work on on the intelligence of the working class that is so underestimated mm -hmm. um, just wonderful storytelling Cool. So that was a real treat. Hmm. It's called Trampling Out the Vintage. Hmm. Something like a six cool. or seven hundred page history. Hmm. Well, welcome, Fred. Um, and Scott, you and your daughter are here. Your daughter's on her own screen, it looks like. Do you want to start with your introductions and then... Okay, I'm Scott Shellhart. I'm a almost graduated elementary ed teacher. Finished all my classes, just waiting on a one to get posted, and I can apply for my license. So I spend my free time chasing down job fairs and sending out resumes, and trying to get something lined up for the fall. So looks like I'm going to get to go to a job fair in Nashville next month, so that should be good. And I'm. I think I've got talked into tutoring a couple kids next month, so that's what's on my plate. Okay. Go ahead, Kelsey. What's up with you? Yeah, hi, Kelsey. Oh, you're still muted, Kelsey. Got to unmute mute your microphone. I fixed it. <laughs> I'm a seventh grade student, and I'm doing pretty well in school. I like the hands on education stuff, the project-based learning. I'm not quite sure how introductions work. <laughs> <laughs> We're not either. We're sort of trying to figure out how to get started here. Um, because we want to talk about a book that not all of us have read. I've just finished it, and I loved uh, sort of the end, the way it all kind of pulls together, by the way. And others, but say again, Kelsey? I haven't read it. Have you ever have you ever gone to a class where you were talking about a book and you hadn't read it yet? 
Not really. No, oh, you're a good student. <laughs> I did that a lot. <laughs> cool. Anyway. So, um, let's try to jump in, though, if we can. Um, Monica, what's going on with you? You're having... Did you meet with the congressman last Friday and you're having some sort of community meeting coming up? Can I put you on the spot with those two things? Whatever sure. else you want uh, to talk about. I got yeah. to meet Jared Polis and um, it, was, it was a good meeting. Um, by the time I had crowdsourced some friends, virtual friends, about you know what I should do and say and... Um, I came away with, I really had no agenda, so it made it really a pleasant gathering. Um, there were 20 some people there, and so um, I also got to meet a lot of local people that are all about this, so that was, it was good. And Jared did say um, he plans to come back for two to four hours to kind of hang out and get to know what we've been doing. One of his big um, focuses is education, so that was good. Um, some PBS film people are coming um, three or four times in January and February um, to put us in a little blurb on there. I think it's an hour special in March. And so they're coming tomorrow. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, the end of the book, I'll draw the book in now. The end of the Good. book, yeah. it talks about seven different places. In the last place, you know, you're, you're traveling all, the, all over the world and then you end up in Columbus, Ohio. And um, as much as I want to travel, I have to say that that was one of the most intriguing ones because that's where we're at in our little movement. Um, we're in year two of a four-year plan that kids came up with to redefine school. And so um, we're just in the middle. So we're, we're coming out of the um, disruptive shadows and moving into you know the coming out phase. So um, these conversations, this art of hosting and conversations are huge. And so... Um, we've had a couple with just parents, and tomorrow night we invited quite a few people. It was short notice because we didn't know what the plans were for these guys coming. Um, anyway, so I invited um, a lot of virtual friends to just pop in to a hangout so you can find me, Monica Hardy, and um, just pop in, and I'm just asking everyone to introduce themselves and if they have any words of encouragement to city people. Could be parents, could be just um, city people, could be kids that are venturing out on can we turn this BU, this quiet revelation, into BS? Can we listen to each other and without an agenda? And um, that's why the book resonated so much with me because it's so much, all these different places are so much about what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. um. And we have a guest, uh, Raul, is it? Introduce yourself. Welcome. Looks like you may not have sound. Raul is actually, um, when we did a pilot program, I don't, can you not talk, Raul? Do you not have, he's typing, so I'm assuming you can't. So, um, when, before we started this four-year plan, we did a pilot program in a math class, and it was self-directed learning. And I just kind of said, all right, mm -hmm. here's the stuff you need to know. It's all, the time is all yours. Do whatever you want with it. Well, they cleverly came up with a self-directed grid that um, drove them through the stuff they needed to do so that they would have time to do the stuff they were passionate about. Um, Raul stepped in as an expert and met him on Seth Godin's online tribe. And I put a call out there for um, expert tutors. Raul came in, and he was placed in that grid as the kids are saying, what the heck are logarithms, and when will I ever use them? So he would find things in real life, or people in real life, that use logarithms or used imaginary numbers. And um, that is great. The kids thought it was great. But I have to say that I feel like I'm extremely rich because I have so many mentors that I can call on, and Raul is one of those. So I, w I hope he gets to talk. The little book that we've written, um, and this is Marianne Riley's piece, is very heavy on rhizomes. And the rhizomatic expertise is what he was really going after, from my perception, of the barefoot movement. And the thing that really stuck out to me in the, um, the whole TED was saying um, credentialing could come from how's your community. 
you know, if your community is a sickly community and no one talks to each other, high suicide rate, you know, bad economics, uh, maybe I don't want your, a person in your community working for me because why aren't they helping you? you know? <laughs> or if your community is doing really well, then you could just about take anybody because even if they didn't make it happen, they're growing up in that community. Um, so anyway, I highly recommend Uncle Roy that talk just came out. Mm -hmm. Raul, can you talk now? Hello. <laughs> we can see him. Doesn't look like he can see us. Okay. So I don't know what's going on. There. Anyway. So, I'm not having a lot of luck with sharing. Or were you able to see the book when I put it up there? Did that sharing yeah. work? It did work. Mm -hmm. Well, we can try it again then. Let's try that. Um, I'll put that there. But then, yeah, what gets hard though is then I don't think I can control that anymore. Yeah. Sorry, just uh, trying to figure things out here from a recording perspective, too. Yeah, this is crazy. So, yeah, that's not going to work too well. I'm going to stop doing that for now. We can work on that another time. So, you know, you'd think we could prepare these things ahead of time, but it's hard to tell what it looks like. I can still show it, though, and while you're talking. So if anybody wants to talk about a piece of it. Um, Chris Sloan, why don't we turn to you for a second? Um, you said you just got the book, and I just finished um, an hour ago. Um, <laughs> But uh, you've been looking at the book. What do you see there um, so far? Let's put you on the um, spot for a second. Well, you know, one of the things that I'm noticing, um, like just in what people have said tonight and what I noticed in the book, you know, Fred talked about his Maker Fair coming up. And then Kelsey mentioned, you know, the class she likes best are, um, you know, project-based kinds of things. And one of the things I noticed in the book is kind of this curriculum of doing um, so like, you know, when I, I read the part so far just uh, in Mexico and then Brazil and then some of uh, the South Africa, mm -hmm. but you know, just, I'm on page 31 and it's talking about Raimundo's, Raimundo's, uh, pedagogy. And he says, uh, is to learn to do, then learn to learn. And so, you know, like there's this emphasis on doing things and not necessarily learning just the abstract concepts which I think is what, um, you know, when you start to think about what doesn't work in our school, it's when the knowledge has been so abstracted that people don't know why they're even learning this stuff to begin with. You know, and so, like, there was that. And then um, I also noticed the uh, in the Brazilian thing, um, he talked about how uh, his rules, this is, I forget who it was, but, oh, Ed, Edgard's uh, rules, and he said, uh, whatever they're working on as, as their group, the product has to be something that we create collectively and with our hands. It can't be an idea. And so, you know, that's what I notice about a lot of school that people complain about is that, like, why are we doing this? You know, I love it when students ask that question. But really, um, a lot of times I think when they ask themselves that question, there's no really good answer. So, you know, that's what I noticed is like this emphasis on doing, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Bro, we hear you now, I think. Yes, uh, I can hear you also. I just managed to hear Chris uh, Good. Uh, more than, uh, I, I, I just didn't catch the part before that because uh, it was all breaking up. Yeah. But uh, hello to everyone. Hello, from India. Welcome. Tell Thank us you. more. I'm finally. Tell us about yourself. <laughs> uh, well, I'm uh, uh, actually an investor, and uh, I invest in the equity markets. Uh, I was with uh, investment bank in, uh, with a hedge fund for quite some time. Now I do my own investments, and uh, one of the areas which I worked on uh, in the past seven to eight years. 
uh, investing on the investment side was education. So in India, we have a lot of uh, private schools coming up. Uh, we have a lot of companies which uh, make educational software coming up. So I was investing in those. Uh, so that is my starting point of uh, interest in education, apart from my own interest, uh, personal interest. And uh, we did uh, some small bits uh, in Hyderabad uh, where uh, for the children of construction workers, which are essentially migrant uh, communities, we decided to come out uh, with uh, what is called uh, a DNE program, which uh, essentially is refer refers to our own context, where there is a mentor and a mentee relationship between uh, a recent college graduate and a, a, a young child, let's say, in, uh, supposed to be in sixth or seventh grade and then they help them to be in the school, to help them out with the homework, and thus, uh, you know, sort of create um, role models in who are educated, and thus, you know, allow them to uh, be in the uh, school for longer. Raul, well, I'm so glad that you came, because um, I have learned more since we had good conversations. Um, have you met up with Manish Jain at all or been to the Swaraj University? Uh, not yet, not yet. Uh, I'll uh, get in touch with you and get uh, more uh, links from you okay. and uh, try and contact mm -hmm. him. Thanks for coming. Um, you're welcome. It's, it's a pleasure. It's a privilege. You know, at my school, and this is just a, a quick connection, but many of the science and math teachers happen to be from India. Um, there are international teachers who are able to work in the New York City public schools, and they're wonderful, thoughtful um, men in their 40s, 50s, usually. One of them has terrible, terrible stuff going on with his family. He's separated, living here in New York with his family in Maryland and so forth. So there's a lot of immigration and, and issues in their personal lives. But they're, when they talk about India, they talk about lots of different kinds of things. Like some of the schools are wonderful and some of them are really open and some are not so open. and seems like seems like there are, you could find whatever you wanted to in the educational systems there in India is that your sense or what do you think uh, very true very true actually uh, let me give you a very personal example uh, my um, my my son is now about 5 months old and uh, the time that I have to get his admissions done is in about six or seven months. I have to do something for his admission, which will start in, you know, when he's about three. It will be a pre-kindergarten kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But for that, I have to start a, a sort of look for uh, admissions in about six to seven months. And then there will be an interview where he will be tested on some, you know, basic whatever they test. I will be tested. I don't know for what, so I have to be prepared. And, uh, and uh, so that that's how it is because uh, A, uh, the number of good schools is quite limited while uh, there are a lot of, uh, you know, there's tremendous amount of demand for one. Then second is uh, despite, you know, getting into a good school or a reputed school, school with a name, there is no guarantee that there will be a good teaching experience out there. Now, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, there is, you know, let's say there, there is a place called Ratnagiri, now, which is uh, about 400 kilometers from here. Oh, sorry, about 300 kilometers from here. It's a small town. Uh, now it's a reasonably, uh, reasonably mid-sized town. But uh, the schools there are very good you won't believe the kind of uh, interest teachers take 
in the students and not necessarily uh, you know they are not necessarily a, a well recognized in terms of uh, you know there is no brand value to the schools or such as such but you just go to the nearest school uh, in your locality and that's the you know usually the best school and that's how it should be is what i think you know but uh, here in mumbai it's uh, very difficult and then there are various uh, types of uh, education that is going on like in one sense in certain parts there is like it's really commercialized so you have a class size of about uh, 80 or 100 which is a little too much uh, there is hardly any personal uh, interaction between the teachers and uh, on the other side uh, it's it's more of uh, interactive but uh, you know ultimately it's it's uh, is the question of who wins the test and uh, so there is a lot of test oriented education that happens but uh, that's how it is so like my own experience has been that uh, my first uh, up to 10th standard or 10th uh, grade or uh, not high school i don't know what you call in us but uh, uh, up to 10th standard here i studied in a school which was like 5 minutes from my home and teachers were very very interested in what we do uh and uh, till about 9 standard it was a very interactive and all and 10 standard we have our board exams so it was very very focused on the test and that was the good part so 9 years you had good education on one year you had to focus on the test <laughs> in uh, in uh, my high school uh, or 12th standard which is our high, uh, higher secondary board which is which determines whether you are going to be an engineer doctor whatever you know uh, math science what is your uh, arts preference uh, that was a catholic school it was uh, uh, our father almeida was very strict very strict in the sense he used to call up at 11 in the night and find out what we are doing and which subject we are studying and what and there was really you know the focus is really very very a uh, high folk degree of focus on students and one of the things i remember is uh, one of my maths professors uh, we had uh, he had us made uh, you know uh, we have to we had to make a formula book where we have to write all the formula and we have to carry it wherever we go and you know no if he finds us the first thing he will ask us where is your formula book and tell me the formula and this and that and he can catch us anywhere even in the loo and then there is no escape so but ultimately it was you know because that is an important uh part in the for the student if you miss that one exam then uh, it's really tough hmm. it's it's how it is this is the reality so 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 in in effect when when i uh, look at uh, lot of the presentations going on even ken robinson even sir ken robinson and uh, some mm-hmm. others who say ki alternate education one of the things i think from students point of view for their future i think it's very important that they focus on tests also because you know uh, i don't know if it uh, if society tomorrow in 5 years 10 years when they will graduate will accept alternate education but if it doesn't then their future is compromised so rather than that i think it's better to have alternate education but for the last 4 5 months before the boards or whatever test you have it's better to focus really sharply on uh on the test and being sure that you know you do well in those tests and then hopefully do what you want not what is the cool thing or in thing so we, not all, everyone has to be uh let's say you know go to engineering computer engineer or not everyone has to be a medical graduate or something like that but uh, do what you think you want to do mm-hmm. it's interesting that you describe uh, the the uh, first 9 years as having been good education and then the 10th one um you didn't say but implied lost to tests and 
the contrary is the experience for most kids that the there's this pamphlet that was just published today about the 10 lost years since Nickleby students all throughout the United States have been trampled with tests every bloody year year after year after year all of them meaningless none of them with any results uh, 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 with anything to show for increasing learning or or anything of, of value it's it's a tragedy it's a real tragedy that is true because uh, in some tests you know the the mechanism of testing itself is uh, uh, we have to reinvent like for example there is no uh, there's no use testing how much i can recollect uh, out of history the important dates when the, you know the ship landed on the us coast when columbus the date on which the king of spain approved columbus voyage or something you know or uh, the day when uh, Alexander uh, landed on the Indian shores, those dates are hardly of any importance. The more important part of it is why they did, you know, there are different levels to it and those are never tested. And then what you are testing is actually the ability to sort of mug up and sort of just put it out on the paper and then forget about it. So you have like a retention of 100 hundred answers that I can memorize and then go out and spill it out and then forget about it. Next hundred. Yeah, well the way Chris, I, I think you were not here when Chris was describing uh, his, his finals that they just had and it sounded like they were actually not what you, what the kind of testing that we've been talking about, they were authentic assessments because mm -hmm. the students had to do presentations and it, it, the the experience was a community building and and had substance and and value right so the i mean the individuals had to you know put effort into their own uh knowledge but then there was first of all you know and then they baked a lot of treats for everybody uh but then while the presentations were taking place you know it was like a celebration of learning and it was right. actually pretty cool and those kids, and this this is just in a photography class. Um, those kids then will uh, emulate those photographers uh, when they get back and do what I call tributes. So yeah, I think my uh, those exams are more demonstrations. Even in English, it's more of a right. you know demonstration slash slash celebration kind of thing. We have a seventh grader here, Kelsey. Do you want to tell us? What do you think about tests? Yeah, unmute. Yeah, there you go. Oh, can't hear you, Kelsey. Got to unmute. I don't like standardized testing. I just did. Yeah, we can hear can you. Hear go now? ahead. Yep. Go. Ahead. Okay. I don't like standardized testing because that doesn't really test what you know, it tests what you remember, not what you really understand. Tests are supposed to be kind of an assessment of what you understand, and the testing we do now is just how much you can remember. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw something out here. Our, our quiet revolution is based on self-assessing, and um, I think I think that's hugely missing, but, um, because unless it's something that you've decided to do, it is, it is in a sense, even t to the extreme of the worst test, that it's facts that you don't really care about, you know. So if we, I mean, imagine if we could um, get people used to or feeling, feeling like the book talks about, free enough and confident enough and to keep time to self-assess daily, you know. It could be as simple as, what was my day like? Do I want to do it again? Or what was bad about it that I want to change, you know? I think that would, that would, that would make a big difference. Because I think we often, as teachers, I think, see that people are their own worst critics, you know. So mm -hmm. even though we think that might be a very slackish sort of thing, it ends up being where you see the most rigor, you know, if, if people truly feel like 
they get to self-assess. So I just want to throw out that whole self-assessment. You know, I, I self-reflection. One of the things that um, we can do that we can build together and kind of see how that goes. <laughs> Um, and that's not the exact language of the book, but there's that's my one of my interpretations is um, in my classes, I'd like to adopt some sort of detox process. And when I tried it with just a kid who was totally bored with what he was doing, I said, you know what, come over here. We, we got these new computers. They have these cameras on them. Um, and, and there's this crazy woman out in Colorado who, who does this, I'm just, I didn't say that, um, who does this detox pro stuff. Um, why don't you s sit in front of the computer and uh, show me how we can do this. Um, but I, it was kind of Yeah, because that's how we do it. So, yeah, exactly <laughs> like that. What, how, can you describe what the questions are? I know you've said another time that you don't do it with, somebody asking the questions, the, the questions are actually there for them somehow. And what are those questions? I tried to say them, but they didn't quite work for me. Because <laughs> I I'll wasn't sure what to write. give you a little short um, yeah. um, history of what I've gone through, the gyrations I've gone through. Um, again, I'm going to go back to the book and just, Good. it's so easy to <laughs> see things in other people and say, fix that or I'm going to suggest that you fix that when usually when you say those things are the, the things you need to fix the most in yourself so um, last year we tried to do this where this is the piece that we're doing as research with the local university is um, this process of learning that we're calling detox does it help people become more self-directed learners or what does it even do you know um, so last year we were doing these B you know can you be yourself instead of someone else? Mm -hmm. Notice the unlikely. What, what have you noticed? Um, uh, what have you dreamt about or imagined? So say you noticed something, and then can you imagine yourself taking care of that or doing that? Who have you connected with or what have you connected? And then what do you do? So it's be, notice, dream, connect, do. What's, so last year we were doing... What's the B question? It's like, who are B, you? It's, it's <laughs> actually... I mean, you can reflect on it, mm -hmm. um, but that we had noticed Dream Connect do. This university professor and I had gone to people who are self-directed learners and came up with these words and then got kids to get them into Kid Burbage. Mm -hmm. And one day we were sitting and looking at a whole bunch of stuff. In fact, the video from that day is on our website. And um, he said, something's missing here. And it was the B. And it's, I mean, you can do all these in any order, and it's not, the words aren't anything special. People talk about this all the time, but the B was missing because, I mean, that's the essence of it, to to mm -hmm. be yourself. So to that, that process is ridding your mind of the chatter inside your head that is like, okay, I'm a mathematician, and I love math, and I'm good at math, and that's my passion. Or have people just told me my whole life I'm really good at it? And maybe I'm not even really good at it. You know, maybe I just worked really hard. And so it's it's becoming yourself. That's the B. Mm -hmm. So anyway, last year we tried to get this self-reflection going through a Google Doc. And some of the kids that did, the, you know, it was good and it helped. I did it, um, but I didn't do it the whole time. You know, and I kept saying, we've got to get this, we've got to do this, get this in. So this year... We, we had a big conference about what would be more user-friendly, what would be something you would just naturally do, and that was the video and looking at yourself. So then we did talk about would it be more comfortable if someone was on the other side, so it was a mm -hmm. conversation, you know. But then we thought statistically it would depend on that person on the other side how people would respond. So it is a, a laptop with nobody there. And um, I have done it, like, and I even tried to ignore it for two weeks, and I couldn't. I mean, it just... It, it has really helped me be really bold about what I'm doing or it's helped me see exactly what I'm telling everyone else they should do and it's me that I need to be doing it, you know. So it's, mm -hmm. it's something that even if this video documentation that we're doing for the research or any of that doesn't work, this self-reflection is huge, you know, to becoming a person with a quality of life. So, hey, Chad. <laughs> 
<coughs> He's joining um, us. Living Keep going, proof yeah. that this is something I think is very valuable. So um, they just oh. go, they look at the computer, and now the, the last gyration of this, Paul, mm -hmm. is that um, I'm telling them, don't even worry about the words. I mean, don't feel like you have to go through the words. Just go sit in the front of, front of the computer and say at the beginning of the day, yesterday was good. This is why. This is what I learned. Yesterday was bad. This is why. This is what I learned. You know, and so we're hoping over a course of years, the video t that we're taking, that we can see someone going from, my day was bad because, and just really blasé, you know, to mm -hmm. someone just getting really into whatever they're into, and their verbiage is, is really, you know, amazing, and they're really focused on something, and that would show some growth. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, look, we, we'll get him in. I just I want to okay. have this dialogue a little bit longer if we could. One of the things that um, we do in Circle sometimes, um, once a week or so, is and it's something I learned a long time ago was um, kids go around kind of individually, students do, and say one thing they've done over the past 24 hours that makes them feel good about themselves. Um, and, and that language is kind of specific um, because it doesn't have to be a good thing they did. <laughs> it just has to be something that makes them feel good. Um, and it becomes kind of a habit for them to be thinking about that over the week. I'm wondering, and, and then we talk about upsets as well um, and then try to attach feeling words to those upsets. Um, you know, it sounds kind of... Um, I don't know, just emotional or social, but there's a lot of storytelling and I learn a lot about how to connect with what kids are really interested in, in those stories that they tell. So I'm, I'm wondering, since that's a habit that we've already established, I might kind of use those two kinds of questions. Um, any thoughts about that with what you're trying to do? Does that sound connected or? Yeah, I do have to say, um, mm -hmm. I, in some senses, I feel really spoiled um, and mm -hmm. very, very privileged. Uh, again, like I said before about the mentors that I have, mm -hmm. um, but because the district gave me this space to listen without an agenda, I feel like I kind of got a speed reading course in, you know, it takes sure. so long for kids to open up and for us to really learn stuff. So I would have to say some of the mistakes we've made or the things we've found from failings was that when we're in a group and sharing like that, um, no matter how hard we try, this is kids' words now, mm -hmm. um, it feels like we're on a showcase and we're, it's not a true self-reflection sometimes. I mean, it can be. And I would never say don't do that because you do learn a lot, you know, from yeah. other people. But um, there's something different about a self. It's just you. You're not impressing anyone. It's just you talking you know, and of course, we're still not there if they're talking into a laptop because there's still remnants of that. Um, but no, I, I wouldn't say don't do that, uh, you know, the group thing. That's great. But we did find out that when we tried to do it in a group, that wasn't raw. And we're I looking was, for raw. Yeah, I hear you. Um, I, was just, I was just suggesting that when they go to the computer by themselves, that those might be yeah. questions they could pose. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you learn? What, how, was your day good? I mean, it can mm -hmm. be that simple. Was your day good? Because naturally then, if they get in the habit of talking to themselves, because again, we believe the process of learning is natural. We came up with these words because we're so far away from the natural, and mm -hmm. they're just a kind of encouragement. But if, if you have a space to just talk to yourself, we believe that will come out, you know, so. How long do you think at first do kids need to be able to do this 20 seconds because mm -hmm. if they feel like there's a time period they have so they could go in for 20 seconds and say because our one of our words is notice I notice a fly on the wall and that's actually even better again if that's what they all they feel like saying because otherwise we won't see any growth you know mm -hmm. if they go in and we've had kids go in and, and read some stuff you know that they've been learning and again, that shows me that they're trying, you know, in a sense, you're trying to impress, you know, and this isn't about impressing, this is about self-reflection of, you know, and what I, is what I'm doing awesome? 
and does it matter? You know, that's the main thing that we're mm. trying to get at. Okay. So 20 seconds, it could I've had kids go in for a whole hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's no rules for that. Cool. Chad, what's up? Uh, not much. It's a good week. A lot of students kind of self-organizing. Lots of uh, different kinds of work, and it, it's always it's a good time of the year when that happens, and you're like, oh, I remember, <laughs> I remember what I was going for here and hoping for it. <laughs> it's uh, taking root more and more. Even even among students, they're getting a little kind of that January orneriness with the day to day of school, or asking me why I'm always doing things a certain way, and I'm just trying to ask them why why are we doing things a certain way. And, See that guy over there, or that you know, the girl over there doing something differently. Um, why don't you go talk to them about how they got there? And uh, it's, it's going good. It's a good week. Chad, have you had a chance to finish the book, or where are you in Walk Out, Walk On? Yeah, no, I. Um, it's probably been. I think I read it over break. Okay. Cool. So why don't we kind of bring this around and ask each other what we want to talk to Deborah Freeze about and have a little more organized conversation next week with her. Um, does that make some sense? I think so. Um, <laughs> who wants I'll, to I'll start in. there? I Thank think, you. Um, because last time or the last time we talked about this, I shared um, the video that she has on the Burkana Institute site mm -hmm. of the um, two-loop theory. And so um, just because of my, I mean, I've explained it now to other people here in the community, so I'm getting better at it, but it, it, I think it would behoove us to hear it from her. So maybe if she could just give a little version of the two-loop theory, because that plays into, okay, how do us who are wanting to change things up, work with the system. You know, that's what the two-loop theory is. How do we, how do, we do that um, sort of a thing? So I think that'd be great. That's cool. Any other? She's coming, she, and, she and Meg are coming to Boulder in like mm. April. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping to see them. Cool. Chad, you have any thoughts? What would you want to ask yeah. Deborah Freeze um, or I mean, talk to her about? Further, further anecdotes about um, roles that that youth play in this kind of work, and and how their needs or their their wants um, either bring them to these places or inspire them to create these places, and how do they go about um, finding their niche, both in kind of walk out, walk on places, but also um, and and having those places you know co-locate or exist side by side with. Uh, more traditional system. So, what happens when students decide to walk out, walk on, or yeah, uh -huh. yeah, um, or or if there's you know if there if there's not necessarily something around for them to walk out of, how do they build these places up? Just how how do youth come to be involved with uh, these places, these ideas, um, and and carrying them to other places? Mm -hmm. I'd like to be able to tell my, my students some stories about that. I guess I'd be interested in the, the Unitera um, education that's happening in, uh, you know, Oaxaca. Um, you know, so that whole thing is intriguing to me about how they seem to be honoring, you know, the indigenous people and, and doing education um, free. Um, free in the sense that they seem to be like teaching each other things but yet there's something that they're getting out of that I, they almost I, I kind of remember them talking about um, they teach or learn for food or you know they kind of trade education almost as like a bartering kind of thing um, and so I guess I'd like to know more about um, that that university of the people, or I forget what it stands for, the University of the Land, I guess, Unitera, mm -hmm. um, and just about the people who started that and the obstacles that they must be facing because uh, the uh, the Zapatistas, I think, um, you know, have been, uh, they've been armed 
uh, struggles with the Mexican army. So I'm, I'm kind of interested in that education uh, down there. And then also the concept of translocal. Um, I'd like to know a little bit more about that. So, I think that would be an important conversation. Yeah. Related, I think, to translocal, one of the things that I would love if you guys, you know, I never know who we are as teachers teaching teachers, and we've sort of been kind of just letting that flow. But I'm just wondering if we could be more specific about, you know, starting being more conscious about what our path is, uh, who we are. You know what I'm saying? Does that make any sense? I, I'm almost nervous to say it, but I'll say it. Um, it's like, I, I was remembering that Youth Voices, for example, um, started uh, not as like, let's build a website, but it was like, we have this community of teachers who are working together. We'd love for our kids to work together too. Um, you know, so it was definitely uh, following a path kind of thing out of something like we do every Wednesday night here. Um, so I'm just wondering if there's a path that a group of people might want to come out of teachers teaching teachers with. Because we don't have an agenda, right? And I'm not saying we should have an agenda, but maybe we could recognize some path. Or maybe she should could give us some advice on what kind of community we are. Is that, you're well, I mean, your it does mark. sound like the education models that uh, are described in the book, you know, uh, and kind of what Monica talks about. I, I haven't been to your, you know, your school or the house, um, but it seems like, you know, people gather and determine what's important and uh, take it from there. Uh, mm -hmm. That seems to be a common denominator in the learning and the the kind of projects that people take on. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I'm sure she'll be able to just, that would be a good start. I want to give her enough space to, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously say, what do you think, what's the thing that you think we need to hear the most? You know, what, after this experience, what do you keep thinking about every day? I know I have a friend that, um, runs with wolves and he's a, a total wilderness person and he told me a couple weeks ago there's never nothing going on and and there's videos that we took last year of the kids and you know how some of those things just are always ringing in your head so I would love to know what's the thing from this experience that you hear over and over you know mm -hmm. She's an excellent speaker, so I'm not, I'm not worried yeah, about feedback. I'm not, and Chad, I don't know if you can be with us or not, but you've certainly had, uh, what, a year or two, how many, two years of building a community of sorts, specifically yeah, some of the language I just read in the book um, earlier t yesterday, I think it was, but is like thinking about communities of practice and then communities of friends and... Yeah. And that kind of difference, I think, is interesting. Yeah, well, as, as you were talking about, um, you know, direction and, and identity and things like that, I was just smiling. Mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of back-channel conversations and, and errant documents, I'm sure, exist about uh, the, the growth of the, of, of the co-op and how it became what it is today. Um, yeah, it, it's it's partly like Chris said about you know, people coming together and figuring out what's important, and then going from there. Uh, and and in that community of kind of moving from uh, I don't know, having a mission or having an agenda to a community of of friends engaged in that work um, is is a matter of allowing enough space so that there's more than one important thing, or that that important thing. Um, has multiple entry points for different people to, to work, to act, to talk, to share uh, according to their strengths and their interests. And so the, that, that it's not just a network of people, it's a, a network of thought and act and acting and, and writing and uh, hoping and visioning around the, the work as well. That's helpful. 
Uh, so those are some of the things that I've been thinking about um, and we've been thinking about. Thank you all. I um, want to get back to anybody who was quiet and wanted to say something else. Kelsey, what's up with you after listening? And you have a Google Plus account. You're not allowed to have one yet, but that's okay. We're not going to say that. <laughs> Look at that smile. Maybe, okay. maybe she can check the stuff she's been putting in the chat there. Right? A conversation between her and her dad oh. in the chat. We Good. Get to share. Why, why don't you guys talk? <laughs> what have you been talking about? I was talking about how I think some of my classes are creative and out of the box, but then I come here and realize how much potential they can have, but don't. Hmm. Well, and I liked what you said. Um, yeah, so I, you have I two teachers you... that I know would welcome the idea with open arms. That's the book. Start any, what is it? Start anywhere and, and follow it everywhere. You know, so it doesn't matter how big it is. Start there. Hmm. And I, I kind of still feel that way about my own class, so <laughs> I don't feel that there's a, there's always another box to get out of. Yeah, and that's good. That means you're alive, right? Right, exactly. John Hagel had an excellent post recently um, talking about finite games versus infinite games, and finite games, you know, we're, we feel really safe. It's it's organizations, institutions, and infinite games lives you live in obscurity but that means you're alive you know so go yep. for it kelsey we're here for you <laughs> the last time we were talking about walk out walk on mm -hmm. i said that i wanted to live in a bigger town because it had more people but i realized that they just have more opportunities you don't really need the people but then i was thinking about it some more i don't i was bored i guess but I realize that here has the same amount of opportunities. You just have to work to find them. For example, when have you found an opportunity where you are? I, last year, I talked to one of my teachers. We had kind of our quiet revolution. Before, it was just kind of, we're going to do this and this, because I forget the fancy term for it, but we were just in one classroom. But we would just kind of be all over the place, and she'd have random lesson plans and kind of pack them into a day. <laughs> and I talked to her, and then we got our schedule set and had kind of a routine, which is putting myself more in a box. Mm-hmm. It was a step forward. What did that routine allow you to do, do you think? It was easier to plan because before we'd be running back and forth and it was really disorganized because not all of our books would fit where we were sitting. So we'd be walking back and forth throughout the classroom. So that gave us more time to actually learn things because we didn't have to go get these books and put these books away and then go get this and do that. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, but you didn't like the disorganization and it was a little chaotic for you and you had to talk to the teacher because you needed more structure. But yet when my third grade classroom and my student teaching, I did exactly what you didn't like. I took their books out of their desk. I took away their desks and they all sat at tables and they had to get up to get their resources and it worked for some of them so maybe that's just an individual thing or, or maybe self-organization and self-direction is the you know, that's the that's the new thing there rather than teacher organization and teacher direction yeah. but the good thing is is you you knew it didn't work for you and you said something and you made a change and I think that was the big victory Cool. We're almost getting into conversation mode here, <laughs> and we're ending. <laughs> it's okay. Um, <laughs> please come back next week if you can, um, and Deborah Freeze will be here. We'll try to organize some sort of uh, conversation um, and see how it goes. 
Any any further thoughts that anybody would like to add before we end this evening, though? I'll try and keep everybody updated on my quiet revolution. <laughs> nice. <laughs> my my biggest, um, I guess, offering to you being through this is I've had several weeks where I just go every day into the detox booth and, and remind myself that a quiet revolution is a quiet revolution. Because even though you say it's a quiet revolution and you keep waiting for something big or you jump for something big and it's quiet revolution is it's just quiet and um, it's, there's no big red bells and there's no silver, silver bullet. So it takes a lot of patience, but it's definitely worth it. And I, I think it is the culture that we create together. Um, you know, Kelsey, you're talking about uh, a room room that was maybe just too chaotic to create the kind of uh, culture that you needed to to learn. And then Scott, I mean, you're talking about the things that work for you. And earlier, I was talking about you know we were baking brownies and doing presentations. So I think if we start to unpack the communities that we develop, just like in Walk On walk out walk on you know that they honor the community itself and then and go from there I think is a pretty valid point instead of scripted curriculum and things like that mm -hmm. so, so what we're saying is really education doesn't need to change the prescribed curriculum isn't even that bad it's just that it's compulsory and if, if we could pick choice the spaces that we go into and, and be conduits to these communities of practice that um, classroom management wouldn't be an issue you know yeah so I want to learn more about hosting I think I think that's what we do on this show <laughs> um, but um, but I think there are probably some things about that that we could learn and do better. Um, so that's uh, that's what's been happening in Columbus and so forth. So that would be another way to go. Um, but I'm going to unhost at this point and, and say and say that we've been uh, broadcasting. Thank you, everybody um, here over the EdTech Talk. Um, it may, was that too sudden? I don't know. Anyway, um, edtechtalk.com um, uh, community on the uh, World Bridges Network, worldbridges.net. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks, Nate. Thank you. Bye.